In this episode, we interview one of our guests, Josh Ellinger. Some of you may know him as Biggie from the radio show Two Guys Named Chris. And in this show, we talk about how he's seen over a 100 pound weight loss success starting at over 700 pounds. He's working towards bariatric surgery, but he talks about how that's not his end point. In fact, that's just another new beginning and how he's been able to not follow a diet approach, but create a healthy lifestyle that he plans to do forever and how that he has found that to not be overwhelming like it sounds. So there's a lot of really great tips and strategies to be had from what Josh himself has seen. And he's had no shortage of struggles or stressors, and yet he's been able to stay on the path. So stay tuned to look forward to hear what he has to say. Hey there, David Chesworth coming to you from Hilton Head Health on the beautiful Hilton Head Island. And we have another amazing health talk episode today. He came to Hilton Head Health for a little bit. He's continuing his path back home and he's he's seeing great success. So we brought him on today to share what's going well, what roadblocks has he come across and to just share his success so far. Without further ado, welcome Josh. Hey everybody. Hey David. Yeah. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Is there anything else about uh, you that uh... I think you summed it up pretty well there. That was that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Perfect. So, well, I guess we'll do, we'll just jump right into it. So, I'm wondering Josh, if you can just tell us a little bit more about, you know, how your journey got started and what what brought you to Hilton Head Health and, and yeah. maybe we start there. Okay. Um well, it's been almost actually, believe it or not, it's been almost a year uh since I was there. Time wow. flies. Yeah. I know it's uh it should be almost a year that I checked in. So, um in that time, uh well, first off, how I got there was basically uh hitting my rock bottom weight wise couldn't get out of bed couldn't move you know walking was just you know when we first met david i think i could walk 10 20 feet maybe without getting out of breath um so um i found you guys um, uh, amazingly and decided to give it a shot and checked in and in the four weeks i was there i lost 52 pounds so now of course that was a year ago and then you wonder, people wonder, you know, how you doing? Well, since I've been home, I've now lost an additional, let's see, 64 pounds. So I'm down what, well, I'm terrible at math. What's that? One, <laughs> 100, 116 or something total. like that? Yeah, so I'm down 116 total from where I was a year ago. That's uh, amazing. Now, my story, of course, is a little bit different because um, my weight was so extremely high when I got there. Um, it was well over 700 pounds. I believe it was 728. Um, I'm still working towards um, the weight loss surgery. That's my ultimate goal, is to get the bariatric surgery. Um, and that's something that's probably a little different than other people. You know, some people come in and just, you know, want to lose 20, 30 pounds. And that my goal is truly to get to a weight to have the bariatric surgery safely and continue my weight loss further, which I'm basically now I'm, I'm qualified for it now, actually. So I'm at the point I need to be, which is an amazing feeling. That that is amazing, and 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 before I ask the next question, I, I just want to point out that you know sometimes there's this um, the stigma around surgery for some people where they might feel maybe you know embarrassed to share that that they've either had one or want to get it, but the the advancements in in surgeries and the efficacy of them have come so far, and for many people it is the, it could be the best thing to do, and, and, and yeah, and so 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 in so in your case. Um, where are you on that path, and and how far away are you from from getting there? Um, well, it, I've now at least qualified weight wise, which is good. There's still more steps to take, obviously. Um, it'll still be, um, you know, it could be. Well, insurance always plays a role, doesn't it? Sure. Um, it could <laughs> be another six months or so. Um, my thing is, which I've been able to do so far, is keeping the positive mindset and keep going in the right direction. You know. My body now has times where it does plateau and I talk, you know, you and I talk frequently and sometimes, you know, I will go that week or two where I'll, I won't lose anything. And it does kind of mess with your mind, but you just, the one thing that I've been able to do, thanks to um, your help and Hilton Head Health's help is keep the positive mindset that to keep going, you're going to have these moments where you plateau. Don't worry about it. Keep the positive thoughts. And that's why I've been able to do what I've done in a year. So, so what strategies have, have worked for you to, cause, cause you're so right. Sometimes, you know, we've talked through that. You've, you've hit that week or two where no weight loss or you're kind of, you know, fluctuating. How, how do you keep that positive mindset? 
Um, for me, um, I mean, I guess seeing the success that I had and knowing I can do it is one way for sure. Uh, many of the different things that you guys taught me there about mindfulness and keeping that positive thought and understanding my body better has been a tremendous help as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the one thing about you guys is you're so just nice and kind in how you treat everyone. So it's not like other, it never felt like a, a diet program to me or anything like that. You know, I was losing weight, but I was also healing myself inside too. So there was a big yeah. up there too. So, you know, lots of little, I mean, we've all talked about the lots of little sayings and things along the way. Um, but, you know, my favorite one is still, if it's in my house, it's in my head, which has helped me avoid a lot of bad um, things coming in. I've really just been able to, and of course now I've done this for a year now, so I've really just been able to fight my way through any bad times mentally yeah. um, with support to, you know, from my family and my girlfriend and everyone. So, yeah. but also, I mean, you see, seeing the results I saw there is just, a, it just, you know, it's a catalyst to keep going and keep knowing I can do it. Yeah. Well, and also I, I remember a few of those times where you either plateaued or kind of fluctuated up and down. And I think all of those times, something unique was happening. For instance, I remember you had a, a huge transition with the software at work that was just taking up so much extra time during one of them. And then, you know, some another instance, you maybe had a vacation to Florida um, and just, you know, or you, you got sick with something. Yeah. And, and so all of these bumps in the road, you might say, you know, maintaining your weight is often a huge success during, you know, a high risk, high stressful situation. Whereas, you know, many people might hit a bump like that and, and, and feel like because either they maintained or gained a little bit that they should just give up and, and that you never gave up. And uh, w did you ever have that thought cross your mind? Was that ever an option? Or how did you overcome that? No, no, I had worked too hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know because I had worked too hard at that point. And yeah results so i wasn't gonna ever give up i yeah. did times um i'm definitely a i'm definitely my body responds to stress that's that is one thing i learned about myself is i am somebody that i never thought of that does respond to a stressful situation like a couple weeks at work that really stress my body really does lock on to that and i never thought of it in that way but it really did it responded i have a stress response and it wasn't that i wanted to eat more it was just that almost my body just kind of shut almost shut down around me you know just didn't yeah burn calories or do anything um no i mean i stayed at this point i'd worked too hard so i'm I, that's one of the that's one of my motivating factors too is that i've really come such a long way i don't want to go backwards you, hilton head health is not your first approach at living a healthier lifestyle How, tell me a little bit about things you've tried in the past and the differences or similarities that you experienced through Hilton Head Health? Well, for one, I mean, I've tried every, you name it, Weight Watcher. I mean, you literally could probably Google weight loss, you know, ways, and I've done them all. Um, <laughs> Hilton Head Health is different because of the approach of things, obviously. Um, you learn about yourself. There's much more. I mean, I found out, it's, that's why I don't even like talking about as much about weight loss where I really, it helped me find myself, which of course turned into weight loss as well. But the approach is different. The mindfulness, thinking about food in a different way, thinking about, you know, how you take in food in a different way. Um, the different recipes. I mean, the amount of thing, it's amazing to me, just the, the food I eat now versus what I, versus what I ate when, before I went there. I mean, it's just, truly a whole mind and body experience that made things way different. It's not just a, it's not just an out of the box diet, if that makes sense. Like you're not just, right. you know, you're not given a, a book and said, here, read this and, you know, read this first chapter. That's going to tell you this. And here's your foods you don't eat. Here's the foods you do eat. And that don't, you know, don't eat those. Cause we all know, I always say, you know, anyone, given a list of foods not to eat and starving themselves for two weeks can lose weight. But what is that really going to do? I mean, right. you know, I used to go to Weight Watchers and then lose weight, you know, starve myself for a week, eat at Weight Watchers, weigh in at Weight Watchers, and then go eat a giant Mexican meal. You know, like it's just <laughs> like, so, I mean, that's, that's one of the things that to me is different about Hilton Head Health is the overall mind body experience that you learn about yourself too. Yeah. Well, I, 
I love the way that you, that you described, you know, the, the food piece, because you're so right. You know, a lot of it's, it's so easy to get caught in that diet mindset. And it's because you're exactly right in terms of weight loss. Diets absolutely work. If, if you restrict your eating, if you don't eat this, you do eat that and you stick with it long enough, it will work. And and those are often really great tools to use if you're an actor or, you know, preparing for a photo shoot, preparing for a movie. But it's a kind of a different ball game when you're when you're just trying to find a healthier lifestyle that you can sustain for a long time because those lift, list of foods that you can't or shouldn't eat, you really aren't ever going to eat those again in your whole life. <laughs> so, yeah. so what, can you talk a little about what foods you you are eating and and or or if there are any foods you aren't eating and that you don't miss or that you do miss or well, I'll just, tell you, just talk to me about what you what you're currently doing with that. Well, I'll tell you too. Um, the one thing, and this just shows a lot about the approach that Hilton had health. You know, my weight loss there was never a giant number, and then it just stopped. You know, I lost 16 pounds the first week, 16 pounds the second week, 10 pounds the third week. It was a continuous, of course, your body after a while slows down, but it was not like I didn't lose 38 pounds the first week and then two pounds the next week. So my body was slowly changing itself. Yes. It's, drastic cut that made such a difference so basically about two percent and in, in one week of, of body weight was lost yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's exactly the thing that it, it was this continuous loss it wasn't this drastic which is how i do before i'd lose you know 32 pounds in one week well yeah of course i was starving myself <laughs> i would lose three pounds the next week and then i give up you know because it was right. then that's how it was um as far as foods, I mean, obviously, I do a lot of cooking for myself. Um, I've become much better at cooking fish, believe it or not, in the last year. That was one thing I was uh -huh. never good at, so I've been able to cook more salmon. I mean, I know salmon's like the most basic fish, but man, that scared me. Uh, so um, I've been able to cook more fish. Um, I don't eat a ton of red meat, um, and that happened naturally, believe it or not. It... Um, you know, I might have red meat once a week. Um, it just kind of left my diet, you know. Um, huh. Some people would probably call, say I stick to a more uh, Mediterranean style diet, and I do. Um, more, and you know, still a big fan of chicken. Um, I also eat low sodium. That's one thing um, mm. that's last year. So um, everything I eat now is very, you know, no salt, no salt added. I wasn't mm -hmm. a big salt person anyways, but, you know, I'm more conscious of, not sure. eating canned foods. I mean, canned foods have, you know, everything has sodium in it. That's one thing I'm learning, yeah. but, right. um, you know, you can avoid certain things and cutting out um, some of the canned foods. Um, vegetable, I'm much more a fruits and vegetables person. I try to get a daily dose of um, fruit in and then vegetables, of course. And um, I count my, I count everything. I try to be more regimented. I definitely count, I try to, Sodium is hard to count, but I try to keep it at a decent number. Um, calories, the same way I weigh out. I have my little food scale I weigh things on. Um, it just becomes kind of second nature now to do that kind of stuff and what I eat. So um, my girlfriend and I battle quite a bit because she is a salt person. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes um, we make separate meals, you know. Gotcha make part of she'll make her part and then i just let her salt up what she wants way she I, can season to her liking yes exactly. yes so, <laughs> um well good more salt for her then you don't need it right <laughs> that's what i always tell her i'm like go ahead have at it and i'm looking at the <laughs> salt thing right now like good lord <laughs> so, so some of the things you just talked about so if, if you were you kind of mentioned if you were to label what you're eating it resembles the mediterranean style diet you have a lot of fruits and veggies you have a lot of fish you're not having as much red meat. Um, you're also having significantly less salt. So, some people might be listening to this and be like, wait a minute, that, that, that sounds like a diet. What's different about your approach as opposed to the traditional diet approach? I don't think it's a diet, though. I, I, I guess for me, I'm just, this is just how I eat now. Okay. Uh, my body's adjusted to it, which, you know, um, is still why the weight loss surgery will be significant for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I... I don't just it, look if I if I want a burger, I'm gonna go have the burger. I'll go eat a burger if I'm in the mood for it. One of the big things that's different for me, and one thing we really talked a lot about at Hilton Head Health is 
if I want a burger, I'm going to go have it, but I'm not going to ruin the rest of the day. I'm not going to, if I want a burger at lunch, I'm going to have a burger at lunch. I'm not going to then throw in the towel and be like, okay, well, I'm also going to have fried chicken for dinner and ice cream because, well, that burger I had had cheese on it and that hadn't, you know, that was a high fat burger and this. And so I don't do that kind of thing. Gotcha. Um, I still allow myself to go out to eat. You know, um, I will look at a menu before I go. I become king of the looking online at the menus. Um, so, no, I mean, and I'm not scared of food, if that makes sense. I don't live my life fearful of, you know, I'm not going to go to somebody's wedding and be like, well, I just can't eat there because, you know, I don't know what. No, I just take every every situation that it comes, and that's a lot to do with the knowledge I got at Hilton Head Health and learn from you guys. So so, so what, I'm, what I'm hearing you saying is that nothing is off limits, but you, you, what you've done is your staple foods, the foods you have most often f- align with your health goals. And for the most part, you also enjoy them. So you don't feel like you're on a restrictive diet and yeah. you don't ever feel like there's any taboo foods. If you, if you want to have a burger, you're going to go have a burger. And yeah. if, you're at, if you're at a wedding or if you're at an event and you don't have as much control over the food, you, know, yeah. you, you give yourself a little bit more flexibility with what you can have. Absolutely. And, you know, as far as cooking for myself, I have learned a lot of the, actually, I bought the cookbook. There's a cookbook you guys have. You can make things taste, you know, and that's one thing I learned from the chef there too. Making things healthy, but can still taste good. And that's yeah. what I really, you know, and like we've talked about, it's been a year for me. So I have a lot of set in things that I'm used to that may seem scary at first to other people, but it becomes a habit and you get yeah. used things and you find ways to enjoy those things and no i still allow myself something you know i i'm getting ready to go to florida um and see my family now and you know there will be times where we go out to eat Mm -hmm. i'm not scared of those i'll make the decision when i get there i know what i can order and what i should order and you know if the day hits me where i say hey you know i instead of getting grilled fish you know tacos i want fried fish tacos well okay but then i'm not going to turn around and then go well, now I'm going to go eat, you know, two ice cream cones because the day's already messed up. And that's my mindset. And that, I'll, I'll be honest, that took a lot to get to that mindset of, you know, work and, and realizing and not beating myself up and, and realizing it's OK to do that. I'm so glad you brought that up because that is a knee jerk response for many people when they feel like they, you know, slipped up or fell off the wagon. And it sounds like it took some work and effort for you. Yes. Was there like a a, mo- a day or a moment when you realized that it wasn't as much of a knee jerk or, or can you, can you talk to that, how you yeah. got to that point? Yeah. I mean, I think it's the, this, you know, I think it's the fact that when I went on vacation where it wasn't just to a family member's house where I could still control, it was like, we had to go to, we went to a hotel where everything was eating out. Mm-hmm. And I was able to eat out for those, you know, basically three and a half days and make smart choices while eating out and came back and still lost three pounds that week. I was like, okay, you know, I went on vacation. I still lost weight. I was able to make the smart decisions. I didn't miss anything. I didn't skip, you know, I wasn't missing out on, you know, there was birthday cake. So I still had some cake, you know, but at the restaurants, I made the smart decisions. But one time I wanted a steak. So I got a steak, you know, I think for me, red meat has almost become my like, um, Kind of like it feels like a cheat meal almost, if that makes sense. Sure. I don't eat a ton of red meat. So if I have like a burger, a real burger, not a turkey burger or chicken burger, that's more of a treat for me than anything. So, gotcha. That's um, a special I, occasion. Yeah. But I'd say that trip was really a big thing for me where I realized that, hey, I can still do this even if I'm forced into these eating out scenarios. Cause I was like, oh, this is going to be bad. It's going to be this. No, yeah. I was. So you're fine. Yeah. That was a big moment for me. And that really helped change my mindset to, oh, okay, we can do what we need to do anytime and still allow myself to have some fun. Gotcha. So for in your in your case, it was going through an experience yeah. where you, you didn't have an all or nothing exactly. action yes. and it yielded good results for you. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So so you mentioned it's been a year, almost a year, because I think you were here in May or May of last I, year. Yeah, it'll be... In about five days will be the day I checked in. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Almost, almost a year then. In that year, what, what have been some big changes for you physically, emotionally? You know, how would you compare yourself today versus a year ago? Physically, um, just even though I'm still big, just moving so much better. I mean, just 
the movement, my body, how it feels. And a lot of that, of course, has to do with the fact that we, you know, exercising and things keeps helps keep me loose. But I mean, mentally, I mean, I think mentally where I was last year to this year, night and day. I mean, last year I thought, I mean, I was at the end. Uh, that's how I felt. I was like, I mean, laying in bed, could not get out of bed, didn't want to get out of bed thinking about just literally just using the bathroom there on myself because I didn't want to get out of bed. Just thinking how, I mean, basically not really thinking I want to die, but just thinking this is, you know, there's nowhere left to go to now. I, I Rock totally bottom. Mindset. Yeah. I mean, just a totally different mindset, even in a year, you know, when I look and I'll just show you, you know, a year ago, I couldn't get out of bed. You know, now a year later, it's like, I'm have a girlfriend who I love dearly. She drives me crazy. Um, <laughs> That's but, when you know. <laughs> yeah, but but it's like you know I have a girlfriend. I have a life again. It's and that happened in a year, and that mindset changed in that year. Am I still on a journey? A thousand percent. Do I still have a long way to go? A thousand percent, yes. But I'm doing it, and I know I can do it, and that's a big difference. Yeah. Well, what I think is really neat about what what you just described is there's been a a lot of success through being on the journey and the journey is not over yet. It, it, you know, another easy trap that we see people fall into is I'll be happy when I finish, but you have a girlfriend, you're, you're getting out of bed, you're doing things, you're going on vacations. You're not quote unquote finished or there yet, you're, but you're still enjoying life along the way. Yeah, no. And, and I mean, I know this probably sounds scary for some people, but there is no finish to this for me. I mean, I'll, uh, for the rest of my life, even after I have the bariatric surgery, you know, that's going to be a drastic change for my lifestyle, even from where it is now. And life is an ever evolving thing. I don't think there's, a, I'm not going to reach an end point where I'm like, okay, well, this is it. I'll reach a point where I'm like, I've accomplished what I want to accomplish, yeah. but maintain that. And I'll have to keep that going. And it's never going to be a, a it's never going to be a stopping point. So. Right. You know, and that's one thing about even, you know, and like I said, I'm not going to sit here and say the last year has all been roses for me. You know, I've battled through some mental struggles and some things, but I was given the tools by you guys to do that. And now I have the tools that I need and I know how to handle certain situations on my own now and do things. So yeah. to overcome those, any type of, you know, issues or anything that gets in the way. I think that. That's the reality. You mentioned you don't want to, you know, intimidate or overwhelm by saying this is a forever thing. But I think that that's the reality that has to kick in um, for people to to realize that really the difference between weight loss and weight management, or or just getting healthier and staying healthier. It's it's as as you mentioned, actually quite easy to lose weight, um, but can be very hard to to maintain the weight you want to have especially if you're on a restrictive diet. But what you've discovered for yourself is, is a lifestyle that you enjoy. You, the foods you're eating are very enjoyable. You're, you're active. You're enjoying your physical activity. You're enjoying life. And it's not that it's easy, but that it's far more enjoyable than restricting yourself. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, you know, when, when I was there, you guys would always talk about kind of like the protective bubble. And yeah, you're right. It is feel like a very protective bubble, but you guys are great at making sure that when you leave that bubble, you're ready. Yes. And that's one of the things that I take with, I still have, you know, I have, I have, you know, the magnet, I'm looking up at the, at it now, the progress, not perfection magnet, you know, love it. you guys have little sayings and diff just different things that you, that I still carry with me and use and think about. And that's one thing that's, to me, different from a diet, too. You know, yes, you know, like you said, you can lose weight. Going to you guys was such a different experience, though, because it's not just about the diet. It's not just about what you're eating. It's a just a total workover of your mind and body. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you, I want to go back to something you said a few minutes ago about, you said, you know, it's not like I haven't had my challenges or had my struggles. I'm wondering if you can shed light on what some of those challenges and struggles have been. Um, just, um, well, just, well, the stresses of work, um, the stresses of some uh, family members being sick and things, 
Um, I myself had to be hospitalized for a short time, never had to dealt, never dealt with that before. Um, so, I mean, there were struggles like that, that you just kind of come to, and I was able to overcome those. And that, that was the big thing. Um, like I said, I learned a lot about stress as a uh, stress kind of, you know, works, <laughs> works, um, against my body, which is something I never knew. So, um, but I've overcome those challenges. I've learned to overcome those challenges. I never lost sight. I never lost sight of the goal of the big goal for me. That's the big thing too. So what, what, what circumstances or So I guess you mentioned that, you know, you, you have learned about yourself that stress yeah. impacts your, your body and, uh, in a way that feels counter to your goal. What are some signs or what is you're more aware of that now. How do you, how did you discover that? Basically because I started, I mean, I discovered because as much as I weighed myself on the weeks, I was having really stressful weeks, whether it be work or home, I was not losing weight. I mean, it just, no matter what I did, you know, and it wasn't like I'd suddenly gorge myself or anything. It just, for me, I, I just can tell for me to be, to lose weight and be, I need to, keep my stress level to a minimum and, you know, and focus more in when those stressful weeks come, I just kind of buckled down mentally more than anything. And, you know, gave the old, which sounds cliche, this too shall pass, which everything does, you know, you just see it like, okay, let me deal with this situation. Then we'll, we'll move on. We'll be back to normal. So I've tried to really implement that kind of mindset, Mm -hmm. which has helped. Um, It's still, you know, it's still been a stressful, you know, a couple months and, but I'm still losing weight. So that's the good thing. You know, you just kind of get past it. You move on, you deal with it. Gotcha. Gotcha. The, the, this too shall pass mindset has been helpful for you. There's no, I'd like to say there's no special, you know, I wish there was a special key to something I could get, but frankly, I'm just the type now that I just, am like, okay, I'm working past this. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you've just made the decision that this is the path you're on. And if you make a wrong turn, it doesn't, it's not a reason to stop embarking on the path. In fact, it's just, how do I get back on the path now? Exactly. That's just, just yeah. like off, you know, like you said, it's a wrong turn. It's not a U-turn. Yes. Yeah. So wrong turn I can fix, you know, I'm not U-turning going back to say the, yeah. other. exactly. In fact, Bob gives that analogy. Um, for those of you listening, if you don't know who Bob is, he's our director of education. He, he gives that analogy in one of his classes. He, he goes, how many of you have been on a road trip before? Everyone raises their hand. And then he says, how many of you have made a wrong turn on a road trip? Most people keep their hand up. And he goes, how many of you, after making that wrong turn, turned around and went home? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone puts their hand down. He's like, yeah. he goes, I know it's a little, it's, it's not a perfect analogy because a road trip is not as personal yeah. as maybe a health and weight loss journey, but it's, it's the same, same idea. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. That works for like we talked about, you know, having one, you know, burger and, and yeah. you know, don't, you know, you're not going to have a burger at lunch and then be like, no, forget it. Well, you know, I'm just going to eat everything I can the rest of the day for absolutely no reason. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the path, so the path that you are on, that Josh is on, what, uh, if you could paint a picture for me of what that destiny, I know there's, it's, there's not really a destination, but what, yeah. what's your vision of where that path is leading you? What, what does your life look like, feel like, what, what is Josh capable of doing? You know, for me, I just want to get to a point where my weight is, you know, I don't, I really want, I don't, I guess no one's, you know, honestly, no one's really asked me like, what's the, where's that final? Cause I, I never think of it in that way. I just want to get to a point where my weight is not something that is thought about, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, still at my size. Cause like I said, I'm still a very big person. Everything I think about is still calculated, even though I'm moving better. You know, what's the restaurant one going to be like? What's the seats going to be like? What's this going to be like? How far is, you know, I want to get to the point where I don't think about things like that. Like my weight, I, my weight is no longer an issue on anything. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's what I want. And it's not about, you know, and I was, you know, people always say the cliche things. I'm doing this for my friends and my family. I'm, I'm not, I'm doing this for me. I'm got to. I will be a happier, better person for them when I achieve my goals. But I just want to get to where my my weight is not an issue. It's not thought about. It's not asked about. It's not, you know, something that's a part of my everyday life. Yeah. I just want to live. <laughs> like I, <laughs> yeah. 
And, and maybe maybe a better question to have asked, because because you're right, it's not like a destination. Yeah. So you're, you're on a path, you're moving a direction. Maybe a better question would have been, what what treasures would you like to collect along the way? And it sounds like, you know, not thinking about weight, yeah. um, being, at, you know, continuing to be active. Um, what else? The, I mean, obviously, the not thinking about weight, continue to be active. Um, I mean, I'm not somebody, you know, I don't, I'm older, so I don't think I'm ever having children. So I don't really have that kind of goal. Okay. You know, I want to stick around for my nieces who are still young, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but really, I just, I just want to feel and be just a healthier person overall. Yeah. And I'm working that way. You know, I am definitely, I mean, night and day, like I said, from a year ago. So um, yeah. still going to be going and it's still going to be going for a long time. So there'll be obstacles ahead. But I don't ever want to have a, I actually don't ever want to get to a point where I really feel comfortable. I know that sounds stupid, but <laughs> I don't want to, because, you know, a lot of people don't realize you can have the bariatric surgery and depending on which one you have, that weight can come back. Sure. So it's really not a, a, it's not a, you know, the train doesn't pull into the bariatric center and you get off and you stay skinny. That's right. not how it works. You know, right. the, the work, and they will tell you up front, the work is just beginning. This isn't, you know, something that's going to be a, oh, well, you know, well, I'm good now. I'm just going to head on back out and uh, live my life as a skinny person. Yeah, that's <laughs> how that works. Um, so for me, it's just like I said, I just don't want my weight to be a factor in, in my everyday life that I lead. And, and a benefit that you have created for yourself is for one plus years prior to your surgery, you've been developing and strengthening habits that you that will just only help you when the, the surgery is over and you won't be starting from scratch and you know losing all this weight from the surgery and then trying to figure out the habits which yeah. could potentially be demotivating um depending on the scenario but for you it'll almost be like yeah i, I know what i'm supposed to do yes very much so the habits i'm now and the habits i learned there have very much prepared me yeah for that. Now, of course, even compared to what I eat now, I will not be able to eat nearly the amount. But food-wise, I'm not. I've broken a lot of those that people really struggle with. A lot of the sugar issues, a lot of the salt issues. That's the kind of stuff that I've already broken and feel good about, you know, and know and feel good about the. I'm I'm ready for that part of things. Yeah, it's still going to be a big change, mostly like I said, volume-wise, but. I've broken so many of the bad habits that, you know, I've heard in these, because you go to seminars and things and, you know, you always hear people say, well, I can't give up, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, you have to, you know, <laughs> like, I've broken up. I, I feel like I've broken up with a lot of the bad things over the last year and mm -hmm. I'm even more ready now. So I'm curious. So you brought up, you mentioned um, a really important point a few moments ago about how bariatric surgery is, is a tool, but it's not the end all tool. Um, you know, why in your case do the surgery versus just continuing to do the lifestyle for anyone listening who might be balancing that? What, how did you come to that conclusion? I came to that conclusion because I have, well, one, I've been looking at the surgery for a long, long time. And I know for me, it is the best option of as far as, yes, I can keep going on this path, but I need to. I, I know, you know, I, it'd be great if in two years, it's like, hey, I lost 200 pounds on my own. That's great. I think doing the surgery will give me a further peace of mind that I'm doing the right thing. And that's what I need. So now it's like, okay, we're going to do this. And then we're just going to keep, because I don't look at the surgery, like I said, as anything, you know, some people call it cheating and they're not, no, I mean, you're, you're talking about saving your own life. There's no, I don't see how anyone can call anything cheating. Right. Um, <laughs> anything to, that's going to improve your health right <laughs> exactly so i don't when i hear people be like oh you took the easy way i'm like you're not talking about like a trail like you know <laughs> life so um i don't really get that but no i think that for me it's been a long time goal of mine i got really bad off and now that i'm really this close to it it's it's where i'm gonna go and believe me, i've had those thoughts where you know and weight goes up and down. So sometimes, you know, I've lost five pounds in a week. And I'm like, ah, five pounds a week? I can do this on my own, no problem. And then it's like life hits me in the face and I don't lose for two weeks. And I'm like, okay, this is why we're still on looking at the weight loss surgery because it's a further tool to get me to where I want to be health-wise. 
Mm-hmm. So, so roughly, I mean, you, you mentioned insurance playing a role, but you know, if all if all falls in according to plan, sometime later this year or early next year is kind of what you're looking at. Well, yeah, we're hoping insurance um, plays a big, big role in a lot of things. Sure. And yeah. every insurance is different, and uh, sometimes when your work changes insurance, um, yeah. <laughs> each insurance is different. We'll just leave it at that. Um, yeah, that's but, fair. Yeah. Yeah, insurance plays a big role in things. And um, so, yes, I, I've decided this year, you know, I'm looking, I'd love it to be this year. If it's early next year, that's fine too. You know, when I look, it is, I will say this, when I look how far I've come in a year and where I'm at, I don't let that kind of like the stress of that bug me because I know I'm on the right path. So yeah. I'm like, fine, you know what? If it's ne- If it's early next year, if it's six months from now, Well, guess what? I'll just keep losing weight for the next six months. I no longer let that, those kind of things get me mentally where I'm like, well, forget it, you know? And that's, that's the one thing. So I took like that news kind of in stride. I was just like, you know, you get angry, of course, where you're like, okay, it's delayed more than I wanted it to be. Um, But at the same time, it is what it is. Keep working, keep focusing, keep doing me. Yeah. And as, as stressful as that probably was, you know, the way you're handling it is a testament to what you were saying earlier that, you know, the surgery is a tool. It's not going to change what you're already doing. These habits you've been building, this, this lifestyle you're on, yeah. whether the surgery happens today or a year from now. Exactly. What exactly. happens before and after the surgery doesn't change. You're still doing the same plan. Yes, exactly. Yeah. thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, and it's just, like I said, you know, it's one of those things in life where, and I think it's out of my control too, you know, <laughs> that, <Yeah. laughs> that's one thing too. I can control how I respond to news and what I put into my body over it. I can't control what the, what happens there. So That's a good point. So, and, and as you have already discovered, stress isn't always your friend. And so if there's yeah. a way that you can control your stress in a way that it diminishes that, that's only to your benefit. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, Josh, I feel like we could be, we could keep talking forever, but um, we'll, we'll have to have you back on here sometime. Yeah. yeah. I, so. I just have one final question for yeah. you, but before we finish up today, and that is, you know, for anyone listening who might be on a similar path, what advice would you have for them? Um, yeah. What advice would you have for someone who might be on a similar path? And if they're thinking about doing something like a, an immersive program, like Hilton Head Health. Well, and you know, I have a lot of people that still ask me that question and I always tell people, one, the same thing is, and I know it sounds, again, cliche, but it's true. You know, you're not at the end. Don't give up. Um, You know, Hilton Head Health really did save my life. I mean, you guys saved my life. I I fully believe that. I will tell people that till the day I die, that going there saved my life and put me back where I need to be on the right track. Um, The fully immersive program is great because it really changes your way of thinking. It's not, like we said, it's not just diet. And honestly, it's not just emotional, you know, the, the, it's a fully, you wake up and it's, it's your whole day and you just feel good at the end of the day because you're learning everything you need to learn. You're eating, you're learning while you eat. It's fully immersive and it does so much for the mind and the body, which is truly what you need in weight loss. You know, that's what you need. You need the full mind and body experience. And that is one thing that Hilton Head Health does and in a fun manner. I mean, it wasn't, you know, it's not like you guys are just drill sergeants, you know, running everybody to death. No, I mean, even exercise doesn't feel like exercise, you know, yoga, you're, you know, walking, you're out on the beach, look at all the activities and things. So, but the classes with the weight loss, with everything played such a big role in changing how I thought. I mean, if you would have seen me day one versus day 30 there night and day i did it was night and day night and day but it wasn't just physically because look when you're my size you're still big but just the mental attitude and the positivity and the way things were and that's why going to an immersive experience like that is so important if you really want to make to me if you really want to make long-term changes that's where it starts yeah i always like to refer to it as like the 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 training wheels for life and it's like a it, it, every, the healthy choice is not just the easy choice here, but it's the only choice. <laughs> and so it gets you into that pattern. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. A hundred percent. Yes. So, 
But I love what you said uh, for your piece of advice. You said, this isn't the end. Keep going. Is that what, is that how you phrase it? How'd you phrase it? Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I always say this, like when you really feel like you've hit your end or the rock bottom, you're really not. I mean, you can keep going. Believe yeah. me, if I can get out of and pull myself out of bed and do it, anyone can do it. Because I mean, I, I really was at the, at the actual bottom where mm-hmm. I didn't know what to do, but there is help out there. And that's the thing. And yeah. you guys, like I said, you guys saved my life. I will tell people that until I'm blue in the face. <laughs> well, you heard it from Josh himself. This isn't the end. Keep going. Josh, thank you so much for joining today. This has been awesome. I can't wait to have you back on. Awesome. Yep, absolutely. Anytime. Very cool. So, well, everybody listening, thank you so much for, for listening today. Um, we hope you got a lot out of this. And remember, ultimately, this podcast is for you. So let us know what you thought of the episode today. What questions do you have for for Josh, for us? Um, Who else would you like to see on the podcast? Let us know. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.